good? Okay, we're gonna get going. Thanks everyone. Morning. Thanks all for taking a few minutes in this beautiful weather. I do want to just make sure everyone knows who's here. We're blessed to have Randy Weingarten, the President of the American Federation of Teachers. Uh, Ed Kelly, who's the General President of the International Association of Firefighters. You've got the great congressman from New York, Tom Swazi. Great congresswoman from Ohio, Joyce Beatty, is also the head of the Congressional Black Caucus. And of course, the legendary Mike Sherrill, of the 11th. We are all here today to fight for tax cuts for hardworking families we represent, like the firefighters, teachers, and first responders who support communities across the country and for me in northern New Jersey by reinstating the state level tax deduction, or we like to call it SALT, we're putting money right back into the pockets of hardworking Jersey families and families around the country. We all remember in 2017, the Red Moocher State stuck it to us with the tax hike bill, by like capping salt, hurting our families and putting states like ours that invest in education and safe communities at risk. We can't allow that, as Randy and Ed will talk about more. These are investments like why, that make states like ours consistently ranking ahead in education and safe communities and why those investments are so important. Last month, after screaming no salt, no dice, Tommy has a no salt, no deal. At the top of our lungs, we ultimately got salt relief included in the reconciliation package that was passed in the House. And now, of course, we're urging our colleagues in the Senate to do the same because restoring salt is about affordability for middle class families. Last point I want to make before turning it over is to put this in perspective. In Vermont, the median property tax bill is $4,300. In Iowa, it's $2,300. In Mississippi, $550. And in Bergen County, New Jersey, in northern New Jersey, it's $15,000. A journeyman electrician can make more than $150,000 a year in Jersey plus benefits. If he's married to a teacher, they can make more than $225,000 a year. It's an electrician and an educator. With salt restoration, that married couple in Jersey will save more than $3,500 on their federal taxes by reinstating salt. I can't speak to the Moocher states, but that's real money from where we're from. And so now I am again asking our Senate colleagues to keep moving forward to include restoring salt as part of their legislation. And now representing the teachers across America and all educators, the great Randy Weingart. Hey. 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 You can say we were doing a summer of salt in New Jersey and now no matter if it's snowing or raining, we're out here fighting for the revival of salt because working families need it and states need it. And, and why do they need it? And I, I've said this before. Look, I'm a social studies teacher from New York City. But the bottom line is this. In the first tax code of the United States of America, one of the first pieces of that tax code was to put in the state and local tax deduction in 1913, 1914. Now why? Because what they knew back then, we should still know now, which is that we have a federal system and most of our services are developed and done by the states. Think about the schools. In, in Representative Beatty's district. Think about the schools in Representative Swasey's district. Think about the schools in Representative Cheryl and Representative Gottheimer's districts. They are great schools. They're paid for by state taxes and property taxes. What happens is that the code used to say that it used to incentivize states and localities for investing in themselves by making sure that the middle class wasn't doubly taxed. That's why you had the state and local tax deduction back to 1913, and that's why it was never, ever, ever changed until Donald Trump decided that he wanted to take that money and give it to rich folks. That's why it was changed. So. Who suffered? The kids in New York suffered. 
Who suffer? People who are trying to take mass transit. Who suffer? Every single service that's done in the states that tax themselves. That's who's suffering. And then who's paying the price? The middle class. Hard-working teachers and firefighters are paying the price. All because Donald Trump wanted to give a tax break to the rich. So what we're saying is let's deliver for the middle class. This is a direct way of delivering back to the middle class and let's put the incentive system back in place that says if you invest in localities, in sewer systems, in fire systems, in light rail, in schools, then you're not gonna be double taxed. That's why we want what the House did in the Senate bill in Build Back Better. Thank you very, very much. And with that, with that, I get to introduce the, the head of the Congressional Black Caucus and one of the most indefatigable and wonderful, I know you're all wonderful, but she's always there, everywhere, Joyce Baby. Thank you, thank you, Randy. Let me just say, first of all, thank you so much for being here. I come from a whole line of teachers, from my late mother to every one of my sisters have dedicated their life to the institution of education and teaching our children. To all my colleagues here, let me say thank you. And yes, I love firefighters. We love you too. But let me tell you that today, I proudly stand here in support of the SALT deduction to help protect vulnerable homeowners who face high and often unfair property taxes. Many of these families are middle class, hard working middle class Americans. They are us, many of us. They are nurses and teachers and firefighters. When I think of the hometown in New Jersey, where my father grew up. When I think of that community of construction workers and teachers and firefighters, that's why, in part, I am here today. Who, after doing everything right, saving, investing, sacrificing for years, wake up to property tax bills that are astronomical. The repeal of SALT in 2017 hurt those families and left many of them with hardships of taxes that were unaffordable. I stand for these families. Now, Randy, you brought it up, so let me go there. In 2017, when Republicans were trying and failing to repeal the Affordable Care Act, they also silently raised taxes for scores of hardworking middle-class families. By imposing a $10,000 salt cap, small-minded politicians kneecapped middle-income families in places where they were already struggling. They wanna tell you that this issue is for the rich and powerful, but tell that to the hardworking families. Tell that to the teachers. Tell that to the firefighters. Tell that to families like my mother and father who have worked all of their lives. Families in the suburbs where property taxes alone can be $15,000 or more. And lastly, I stand up for many of the black families whose families inherited homes from their parents in neighborhoods that were on the edge, but thanks to gentrification, now have exorbitant taxes, and often they were forced to sell their homes because they do not have the income to pay the tax and now can't deduct it. So thank you for being here, and I stand with my colleagues. Now I have the distinct pleasure of introducing a friend, someone I enjoy serving with, someone who speaks truth to power, someone who comes from New York, <laughs> someone who believes in this, no other than our colleague and my good friend, Congressman Tom Swazi. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Joyce. 
so much. Listen, we have a we have a very clear message here today. We've built a coalition of people. We accomplished something in the House that is so important uh, to the future of our country, the future of our states. And now it's before the Senate, and we need the Senate to deliver for us. And we're sending a very clear message here. We're taking the coalition of the folks that have said no salt, no deal, no salt, no dice for some time and saying we're sticking with that. We need to get that deal done. We need to get salt to be part of this final package. And we brought in our friends from labor. We brought in the teachers and the firefighters who have stood with us throughout this process because why? Very clearly said by Randy Weingarten, it's about their members who have to pay state and local taxes and can no longer deduct them to the extent they were before from their federal income taxes, and that's unfair. It's unfair that you're taxed on taxes you've already paid, but also it's unfair to our states because our states and our localities are the laboratories of democracy where we decide how we're going to try and address the problems. And we've chosen in our states to tax people to do progressive policies. We have unions. We support unions in our states. And that costs more money, but we think it makes our lives better. We have low rates of uninsured children in our states. That costs more, but we think that makes our lives better. We have mass transit systems that we think makes our economy better and protects our climate, and it makes our lives better. It costs more, but it makes our lives better. So we've done these progressive things in our states over decades and decades that end up giving us higher state and local taxes. We've always been able to deduct them. And it's unfair that that's been taken away from us. So this coalition today of members of Congress, of the leader of the Congressional Black Caucus, of the unions that are so affected by this, not only for their members, but the states that they work in, because if somebody leaves our states and goes to a low tax state, who gets left behind holding the bag? The people that are still in the state that are going to see their taxes go up to make up the difference, which we don't want that to happen or see their service, our services cut, and we don't want to see that happen either. So it's so important that our friends in the Senate, all of our friends in the Senate, from the most moderate to the most progressive, recognize that this is good policy. It's good policy to have a state and local tax deduction as we've had for over 100 years in the United States of America that was unfairly taken away from us in 2017. And we compromised in the House, and we think it's a good compromise, but we need to have that done in the Senate as well. So I want to bring one of our, our great partners who's been with us throughout this process, uh, who represents firefighters all over the United States of America, that represents working men and women that show up at a moment's notice. Uh, and because they're part of a union, uh, they have a decent standard of living with decent wages and benefits. And their members are under threat because they can't, can no longer deduct as much as they could before for their state and local tax deduction. And if you'll continue to leave our states and leave holes in our budgets, they're going to be even under more threat. So let me introduce my great friend, Ed Kelly, from the International Association of Fire. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Mr. Congressman, for all the work you do on behalf of all working families, along with your colleagues and my great colleague, Randy Weingartner from the uh, AFT, the Teachers Union. I'm very proud to stand here to represent 325,000 firefighters and paramedics throughout North America, 285,000 here in the United States. You know, in 2018, this previous administration, as you heard, signed into law the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which neither cut taxes nor created jobs. Despite the name of this law, it put enormous, unnecessary strain on cities and towns all across America. And it's made it even harder for us as firefighters to do our jobs protecting the citizen. That financial strain has made funding levels unsafe. This critical funding is needed to ensure that firefighters and paramedics and teachers and police officers have the staffing, training, and equipment we need not only to educate our kids, not only to police our streets, not only to fight the fires that ravage, that are happening right now up where I'm from in Boston, but also take care of the most vulnerable amongst us, our elderly, our children. It's imperative. And to make matters worse, 
The salt cat tax is an additional tax on middle class workers. Us. The people that get out of bed every day and go to work just like you. The tax is wrong. We can do better. The salt cap is nothing more than a tax on working families and a tax break to the rich and famous. Again, I'm thankful for Congressman Swazi's hard work and all of his colleagues who stepped, stood up and stood tall to right this wrong. And I call upon our members in the Senate to support this initiative, to support your firefighters, to support your teachers, to support the children and the elderly, and the people who make this world, our world, that we all took an oath to serve better. Thank you. Excellent. Yay. Excellent. Way to go ahead.